Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Solar Sister channel. It's your girl, Solar Sister, coming to you once again with another video. First of all, let me say Happy New Year. Happy 2022, everybody. I pray nothing but peace and blessings on each and every one of you in this new year and beyond. I'm excited about what the year is going to hold for all of us. And I just wanted to come on here today, really just to talk to you about a customer service situation that I had today. Actually, I can't believe that my first day into the new year, somebody tried to get me to go left. But anyway, I held myself together. So we're going to talk about it. Um, before we move forward, though, guys, if you would go ahead and thumbs up the video and hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. So I wanted to talk about something else. At least I thought I was going to talk about something else with this being the first day into the new year. But because of the situation that happened today, it really got me to thinking. Excuse me, I'm having a little situation. Um, it got me to thinking about how people um, in the West think that customer service is so much better than it is in um, a country that you may be going to repatriate to or you may be vacationing in or what have you. So people like to hold the West out as the example of how things are supposed to be. But I had this experience today and it made me think about how customer service is on the spectrum like a whole lot of other things. Um, there are people who are horrible, there are people who are great, and there are a lot of people in between who are providing, you know, decent enough service where, you know, you can be okay. But this particular situation that happened today made me want to do this video because it was a lesson, of course, in patience, and it was a lesson also in how to be diplomatic, but also hold firm on what you are willing to accept and what you're not going to accept. So let me go back to the beginning of the year. Um, there was a guy who was coming, he was in the neighborhood who was, he's a person who provides tree cutting services, pruning, whatever. So he was going through the, the neighborhood, just surveying different people's trees, trying to see if there were any trees that were in distress that needed to be cut down, pruned, what have you, which is great. You're a businessman. That's what you do. You're going out looking for customers. Great. He came to our door, gave me his card, explained to me what he was um, there to do or what he could do that particular day because he had his equipment ready. If we wanted the tree cut down today, this is the amount that he would charge for it. And it was a pretty good amount because I knew I had already been looking for somebody to cut the tree down anyway, and I had a figure in my head. So he was below that, and he was able to do it that day. So I actually talked to my dad about it. But because my dad was elderly, he had just woken up. He didn't have time to try to process it. He didn't want to make a decision right then. So I told the guy, look, I have your card. Once we you know, can talk it over, we can figure out what we want to do. Um, if we want to move forward, I'll give you a call and set up an appointment, you know, for you to come out and take care of it. Cool. So fast forward to the Sunday before Christmas. I don't remember what day that was, but the Sunday before Christmas, the tree fell. Now, from the beginning of the year up until that particular day, a lot of the limbs had already fallen off the tree because it was a dead tree. Um, so it really wasn't a whole, whole, whole lot of limbs still left on the tree, but there were enough to make a nice crashing sound against the house. So that day the tree fell. I mean, it toppled over, pulled up the whole root. I mean, there was no roots or anything left. It just fell over. Nice, clean cut. So really any, all anybody had to do was come in, cut up the tree, move the limbs, boom, easy job. So I called the guy, I found his card, called him that day, um, that Sunday, really wasn't expecting to get him, but was expecting to leave a message. Fortunately, he answered the phone. I was shocked, but, uh, and I told him, you know, that I was shocked that he answered on a Sunday. So we were just talking, I explained to him what was left of the tree, how it had fallen, it was an even break, just needed to cut it up, haul it off. And he said, well, okay. He said, I'll come out. I'll give you an estimate within 48 hours. He said, and because it's the holidays, I'm giving discounts. Because I told him, I said, don't be trying to charge me a whole lot of money because the tree has fallen and it's a clean break. So he said, yeah, you know, because it's the holidays, I give a discount. He said, but I'll be there within 48 hours to give you an estimate. Cool. 
Monday came, that was 24 hours. Tuesday came, that was 48 hours. And Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday was Christmas. Uh, Sunday, Monday, that next Tuesday, I actually ended up hauling off the branches that were just scattered around the yard. There were some large branches, you know, caused me to have to do some 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 labor. So I actually um, pulled those, uh, the branches that were loose, pulled those away because the yard just looked crazy, pulled them to the um, alley on the other side of the fence because the city comes by and picks up, you know, debris like that every week um, on Thursdays here. So all that was left was just the main part of the tree, the main branch of, or whatever you call it, stalk, whatever, I don't know, trunk. But anyway, that part of the tree was still left. So really it just needs to be cut up. So I, because I was still trying to figure out what I was going to do because I hadn't heard anything from the guy, I was thinking about, well, how can I roll the, I wonder if I can roll the log to the um, alley or uh, can I get a saw? My, my dad has a saw, um, a manual saw in the storage room. But, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to see if I can get somebody who has an electric saw and I can just cut it up. Okay, I'm not worried about it. Whatever. So today, get a call from the guy. So tomorrow would be two weeks from the time that I spoke to him, for the last time I spoke to him. So he calls and says, you know, he had some issues with his phone, had a virus on the phone, and he was wanting to know if I still needed the tree cut down. I said, yes. And um, he said, well, okay, um, I'm sorry, I apologize. He said, but I'll come by in the next 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, you know, because you didn't do what you were supposed to do two weeks ago, you told me you had an issue with your phone, I'm cool, that's fine. I understand stuff happens, let me give you another chance to make it right. And he didn't come in the 20 minutes that he said. If you know this area, there's nothing that's more than 15, 20 minutes away. Really, you can get to anywhere you need to get to, probably in 10, 15 minutes tops. So in an hour from the time that he said that he would be here in 20 minutes, he called back, said that he was on his way. Okay. So I said, well, let me just send you a picture of the tree so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. He never responded to, you know, the tree and how much he thought it would cost. He got here about 30 minutes later. So hour and almost two hours later, you're, you're here at the house to do what you didn't do almost two weeks ago. So he gets out, he's looking at the tree and I'm talking to him and I said, well, how much do you think, you know, you will charge me for this? He's like, oh, you know, based on the prices, you know, about 300. I was like, no, that's not going to happen. I said, so there's nothing here. All you have to do is cut it up. And I said, and you really don't have to haul it off. It just needs to be moved to the um, alleyway so that the city can come pick it up. I said, so he said, well, okay, well, 200. I said, well, no. He said, well, what are you thinking? I said, about 125. He was like, well, 150. I said, no, 125. And he was like, well, um, I said, well, I, I said, well, okay, well, how much will you charge me just to cut it up? And then I'll haul it to the alley. He said, well, about 125. I said, sir, first of all, it's interesting to me that you wanted to charge me $300, which is more than you were charging at the beginning of the year when the tree was still standing. I said, the tree has fallen. All it needs to, all that needs to be done now is for it, this big piece to be cut up. And I said, because you didn't show up when you said that you were going to show up within those 48 hours to give me an estimate, I ended up pulling a lot of the limbs away myself. So what was here two weeks, almost two weeks ago, is not even here you have a whole lot less to deal with than you would have dealt with had you come in those 48 hours. And so he was like, well, yeah, you know what? I have a business, you know, I'm a boss. And I was like, well, no, that wasn't a boss move for you to come out, for you to tell me you were going to come out within 48 hours, never show and never call. And then call me two weeks later. And I say, okay, I'm still willing to utilize your service. And you still didn't show up on time. And you didn't show up, you know, trying to be humble for putting, you know, the excess burden on me to have to move the limbs myself. And I said, so that's not a boss move. I said, and really, if you were a, a real boss, even when your phone was down, you would have had another way of contacting your customers to let them know what was going on. 
And so we went, you know, kind of back and forth. And so I just told him, I said, look, I said, if you want to cut, no, he kept saying, well, you know, I'm just trying to help you. I'm just, I said, well, no, you're not helping me. I'm trying to pay for a service. I said that you initiated. I said, you were the one who solicited to provide a service. And I said, and when I reached out to you to initiate the solicitation that you initiated, <laughs> I said, you didn't even respond in the correct manner. I said, you set the expectation. You were the one who said you'd be out within 48 hours. I said, now, if you had said I'm coming out in 48 hours and I said, well, I need it done today. And you would have said, well, I can't do it within 48 hours. Then I would have said, well, okay, well, that's not going to meet my time frame or my expectations. So thank you. I could have moved on to someone else. I said, but no, you set the expectation and I waited. So he said, well, you know, the phone works both ways. You know, when, when you didn't hear from me, you could have called me. I said, well, no, sir, that's not how it works. I said, now, when you miss your doctor's appointment, does the doctor call you to find out why you didn't come? No, they don't. I said, well, based on their policy, they may charge you for that missed visit or they may not. I said, they may give you a courtesy call to say, hey, your appointment is this day. I said, but if you don't show up, they're not calling to tell you or ask you why you didn't come. They're just, you just don't use their service. So I said, so at the end of the day, I said, you're not doing anything to help me. I said, you are providing a service for which I wanted to pay for. I said, so at the end of the day, customer service is key um, for any business that you have, any business where you, re you are um, expecting people to pay for your service, pay for your product, then you need to be able to make sure that you hold up your end of the, the bargain. I said, you set the expectation. I waited for you to deliver. You did not deliver. And I said, and, and I didn't cut you off because when you called today, I gave you another opportunity. And I said, and then you came in the wrong manner. I said, but that's okay. I said, but what I'm going to do is I will cut the tree up myself, leave the tree where it is. I said, since it's been here two weeks now, it'll be fine just being right where it is. I'll take care of it. You move on. Well, I was just trying to help you. No, sir, you were not helping me you were doing a service for which you solicited my money. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I say all this to say this. Customer service is key. I don't care what business you are doing, what service, what product. Customers, if you are expecting customers to pay for your product or your service, all you have is the exchange. All you have is the filling that happens during that exchange. So if a, cur a customer likes what you provide, they like the service that you've given, then they come back and they patronize that business over and over and over again. The only thing that you have is your first interaction with your customer. That is the thing that sells whether or not that customer comes back or whether or not that person refers other people to your business. So one thing that I do know, one thing that I, I know how to do is provide good customer service, and I know what good customer service is. The one thing that we can do as people who are patronizing businesses, um, purchasing products, is we get to decide whether or not we give our money continuously to those particular businesses. So one thing that I want to do when I get to where I'm going is if I can provide um, assistance with customer service and quality service, I want to be able to do that. Um, if I can help somebody with organization, I want to be able to do that as well. Guys, look, that's all I have um, for this particular video. I went a little longer than I planned. But guys, like I always say, if you can't do anything else, protect your headspace, guys. Protect your heart space and keep your vibration high. Look, we're getting ready to make this thing do what it needs to do in 2022. Until the next video, guys, it's your girl, Solar Sister, signing out. Peace.